Hello everyone, this is Jason Merkel with Ryzen Hobby, and I'm here with a quick flight talk video on an airplane that I've been having a lot of fun with. This is the Hobby Zone Aero Scout S, and it's sold as a trainer, and it's a phenomenal trainer. And uh, I think it's very important, though, that people see that it goes even beyond that. So you can not only learn to fly with this airplane, you can also advance into basic aerobatics, uh, even some more advanced aerobatics. Uh, I think a lot of people are very surprised when they see this airplane in the hands of an experienced pilot. Uh, it's a very, very capable airplane. It can do aerobatics that are very unexpected for a trainer aircraft um, and it, that's the reason I've been having a lot of fun with it it's a combination of a phenomenal trainer and also a great sport airplane so even if you're an experienced pilot already know how to fly uh, this is still a great airplane to have in your stable uh, it's something that you can enjoy on your own you can help teach people to fly with it um, and then if you're a beginner it's a phenomenal first aircraft we've got a whole series of videos out there that show how to put it together repair it um, there's a lot of different information out there on this airplane as a trainer in particular uh, and so it does have our safety technology which has the three flight modes beginner flight mode intermediate and exp expert flight mode experience mode I'll show you guys all of that in the video real quick uh, but I'm gonna focus a little bit more on the experience mode and what you can do with this airplane if you're an already experienced pilot and then also if you're a beginner you can see where you can potentially progress with this particular aircraft so as you guys can see one unique feature of this airplane is it's a pusher configuration so we've got the prop behind the wing uh, it's not up on the nose so if you do crash or if you have a bad landing or something you typically do not damage the prop the motor the motor mount that's a great great feature uh, it maybe it affects the looks a little bit obviously it looks a little different than a traditional airplane but at the same time it's a very very functional benefit it does have tricycle landing gear, as you guys can see, with oversized wheels. That works really, really well on uh, rough surfaces, dirt surfaces, rocky surfaces, and of course, grass. So that's really nice. We're flying on pavement here today. Uh, it has great ground handling on all those surfaces, though, because it does have steerable nose wheel as well. Uh, it is a full four-channel aircraft, so we've got the steerable nose wheel and rudder, of course. We've got elevator, and in this case, actually a full flying stab, which is a, a kind of an interesting and unique feature on this airplane. And then, of course, we've got ailerons. And uh, what's nice about that is it does make it a four-channel aircraft. It makes it capable of four-channel aerobatics. So you can see I'm in the beginner mode here now, and uh, when you move the stick for aileron control, you're actually seeing some mixing that we have built in with the rudder and the elevator as well. It just helps a beginner make smoother turns. It's coordinating the turn, keeping the nose up for you, uh, and kind of sliding the tail around to make it a little bit easier when you're first learning to fly. When you go to the intermediate mode, you don't have that mixing, and then when you're in the experience mode, of course, you don't have that mixing either. So, a uh, couple things to point out there. And so, it does, I am flying it, by the way, box stock. This is a 100% box stock airplane. We sell it as a ready to fly, and we also offer it as a buy to fly basic. The ready to fly version includes everything. It comes with the airplane, of course, with all of the electronics already installed. Uh, it takes a few minutes to assemble it out of the box. Very simple to do. I'm flying it with the stock DXE transmitter that comes with the ready to fly version. So it's a very standard transmitter. It does have the switch for the flight modes. We've got throttle hold or throttle cut, which I do have on right now. Uh, we've got a high and low rate switch and then we've got our, our two sticks. Also inside here, I'll show you guys, we're flying with the stock battery that's included with the ready to fly version. So it's a three cell 2200 milliamp 30C Spectrum Smart LiPo battery. So that is included with the ready to fly version. It does have a USB smart charger as well. Uh, when you buy the buy fly basic version, you do not get the transmitter, you don't get the battery, you don't get the charger, uh, but you can install pretty much any three cell 1300 up to a 2200. You might be able to squeeze a little more battery in there, but you really won't need to. With a 2200 milliamp battery, the flight time is phenomenal. Even flying it as aggressive as I'm gonna fly it here in a few minutes, I get upwards of eight to 10 minutes of flight time if you're cruising around at low throttle you know maybe half throttle or even a little less than that it'll stay in the air uh, you can actually get upwards of 15 minutes 20 minutes you could probably eke out even over 20 minutes if you, if you wanted to so uh, really just a great flying airplane uh, very efficient airfoil. One thing that I like about it, even though it's a relatively small aircraft, it's 1.1 meter, it actually does penetrate wind quite well. Now, when you're first learning to fly, you don't want to be flying out in the wind if you can avoid it. Uh, but if you have to, this airplane actually handles it very, very, very well for its size. Uh, for an experienced pilot, that's also great because, of course, there are days when you might go flying and it's a little bit windy. Um, and so, yeah, I think that covers basically the vast majority of the, the features. Again, there's a whole lot more information out there on this model, uh, especially for a beginner or first-time pilot. Uh, but I'm going to show you guys what it can do all the way from the beginner flight mode, intermediate mode, experienced mode, but I am going to cheat a little bit and start in the experienced mode just because it's a fun way to take off. So here we go. So I'm going to turn, throttle cut off now, the throttle move off, and there you go. You can see that steerable nose wheel in action, which is really nice. It has really great ground handling. 
is really nice when you're first learning how to fly. So again, I am in the experienced flight mode now, and I'm going to show you guys some of what this airplane can do. So inverted right on takeoff, no problem. This airplane actually flies tremendously well inverted, uh, which is unusual. A lot of trainer aircraft with high lift airfoils in particular don't tend to perform incredibly well inverted. A lot of them can fly inverted, but it takes a lot of down elevator. This one doesn't require too much of that. So you guys can see pretty good performance, pretty good power. You can pull into a nice loop here. Very, very aerobatic airplane. Again, it's a four-channel aircraft and it's capable of all the standard four-channel aerobatics. You can even do knife edge. <laughs> I think this was probably the maneuver that impressed the most people when they saw it. They couldn't believe that it was a, a box stock airplane, and then a lot of people that have seen it fly recently have said, hey, this is a trainer. I can't believe a trainer can do knife edge like that. Little stall turn there. It's also a good rolling airplane, so I'm going to do a little rolling circle here. Try and keep it above those mountains so you guys can see it, hopefully. And again, capable of all the standard aerobatics as, as well that a four-channel airplane is capable of. Nice Guys, this airplane is a lot of fun to fly. Again, even if you're an experienced pilot, long-time experienced pilot, uh, you this airplane and you will absolutely have a blast with it. It just is a phenomenal handling airplane. Again, a great beginner airplane, a great trainer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to switch into the beginner flight mode. You guys can see the airplane there. I was in a turn and I flipped to beginner mode, which basically is safe. And in that mode, it does have self-leveling. So when I let go of the stick, the airplane goes right back to level on its own. And then when I hold the stick all the way to one side, so in this case, I've got the stick all the way over to the right. I'm not, inclu I'm not adding any elevator. Not adding any rudder, and you guys could see it made a nice coordinated turn there. And so in the beginner flight mode, you have pitching, pitch angle limits and bank angle limits. In this case, I'm showing you the bank angle limit here. So that's it, maxed out. I got the stick all the way to one side. It will not let the airplane roll upside down and uh, potentially, you know, crash. And that's where a lot of beginners end up having a lot of trouble their first few flights. They tend to over control the airplane. And so safe in that beginner flight mode helps to eliminate that as an issue. So. Uh, it's also got the pitch angle limits, so when you pull back on the stick, I'm going to add some power there. You can see I'm pulling full up elevator, and the airplane is just kind of climbing at a nice, reasonable angle. So it's not climbing too fast. It doesn't allow me to actually loop the airplane. Now I'm kind of descending here, and you can see, even in the beginner flight mode, it actually does manage the descent rate to some degree for you. It has a... Um, a different mix in there on the elevator to throttle in that beginner flight mode helps to keep the nose up and so what's nice about this airplane in the beginner flight mode is that you can basically line it up on the runway and let it land itself uh, it will probably bounce because the nose is pointed down just a little bit uh, but it is very 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 easy to land in the beginner flight mode so I'm going to bring it down a little lower here and then I'm going to quick show you guys what it does in the intermediate mode so again I'm in the beginner mode now I've got the bank angle limits I let go of the stick, I've got the self-leveling, goes back to level every time. Intermediate mode is slightly different. So in intermediate mode, I have the bank angle limits. It gives me a little bit more. It also doesn't have that mixing. So you can see I'm holding the stick all the way over to one side now and the airplane's banking more than it did in beginner mode. It's also losing altitude and that's because it doesn't have that mix for the elevator and the rudder added with the ailerons that it had in the beginner flight mode. The other interesting aspect of intermediate mode and why it's a perfect second step after the beginner flight mode is it doesn't self-level. When you bank the airplane, for example, and let go of the stick, it continues turning as it should, um, which is much more like the experienced flight mode. So this is kind of a good stair step into that experienced flight mode because it helps you learn how to level the airplane after making a turn. Uh, you have to manage the elevator a little bit more. Uh, it doesn't keep it as level for you and maintain the altitude as well. Uh, so again, the intermediate mode is a nice next step. So we've got those bank angle limits. There are still some pitch angle limits. It allows me to pitch more than in the beginner flight mode. But again, I can't loop and also can't force the airplane straight into the ground at a very high rate.
So that is the intermediate mode. So now I'm gonna go back and have a little more fun in the experience flight mode, back into the experience flight mode. In this flight mode, there are no limitations. There are no bank angle limits, no pitch angle limits. I can do any maneuver that I want. I have full and complete control. Now in this flight mode, we do have our AS3X technology, which are three axis gyros, smoothing things out. Now we're actually flying on a pretty much dead calm evening here. Uh, so AS3X isn't doing a lot right now, uh, but on a windy day, it helps smooth the airplane out. And again, guys, this thing is phenomenal in the wind. By far, uh, probably one of the best handling airplanes of its size in windy conditions. Uh, obviously, there's gonna be some limitations in how, many, how much wind you can fly and you're not gonna fly this thing in 30 mile per hour winds, but you uh, certainly can fly it in 10 to 15 mile per hour winds if you're comfortable and if you're skilled enough. Show you guys some nice, smooth, low flying. Again, I'm in the experienced flight mode now. A quick little touch and go here for you guys. So you can see how easy it is to land. I'm gonna go ahead and land it in the experienced flight mode this time. And then later on, I'm gonna land it in the beginner flight mode. Just kind of let it come down. Start to flare here, keep the nose up. Absolutely beautiful, keeps kind of like holds the nose up if you want to. And I'm gonna go ahead and take off again. A little roll on takeoff just because we can. Bring it back around. So we're at full throttle now, and you guys can see the speed is pretty good. It's not a, a super fast airplane. It's intended to be a trainer, so it shouldn't be too, too fast. Get back around here. One more knife edge, just for fun. <laughs> I love the fact that this trainer airplane can knife edge all day long. Pretty amazing. There's a little bit of coupling. Uh, for those that are experienced pilots, they kind of know there's a little bit of aileron and elevator required to keep that nice and straight. So I'm gonna switch back to the beginner flight mode now and I'm gonna land it in the beginner flight mode and show you guys how simple it is. I'm basically going to line it up on the runway, pull the power and let it land itself. Hopefully you guys can see it. It's getting a little dark out. Um, all right, I'm a little on the high side probably for this approach. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go around, lead off a little more altitude. And that's something as a beginner you're gonna have to learn is kind of managing the the distance out that you need to be and how high you need to be when you make your approaches. It's a little bit of trial and error. This airplane does glide very well, so I do need to kind of have it at a lower altitude. So again, I'm not gonna touch the sticks. I'm just gonna let the airplane land itself. You can see in the beginner mode, it'll land itself successfully. It keeps the nose down, so it does tend to bounce. So I'm gonna stay in the beginner flight mode. I'm gonna take off one more time. Still in the beginner flight mode, and I'm gonna make one more landing, and this time in in the landing, I'm actually going to just add a little bit of elevator and flare. So that way you guys can see the difference between letting the airplane land itself in the beginner flight mode and then just adding a little bit of elevator. All right, so got it on approach now. Letting it come down on its own. Get about a foot or two off the ground and start to flare, flare, hold the nose up. Nice and easy. And again, we've got that steerable nose wheel so we can turn it around and bring it right back. Just a lot of fun, guys. An easy to fly airplane, perfect for the beginner. Uh, phenomenal value. The Ready to Fly package is a great price. The Bind and Fly Basic version is also available for experienced pilots. Um, and again, if you're an experienced pilot, you can also have a lot of fun with this. Thank you.